Oh, hello. Uh, I figured I'd make a couple little updates here of what not to do. Um, put my caster camera plates back in the car. Been sorting out power steering things for a little while. Uh, realized I'm not going to have a power steering cooler, so I deleted that. Um, probably going to add a power steering cooler again at some point. Uh, what I've decided on with these power steering lines, I'm going to do dash six on everything. Uh, and I'm going to run, I got a couple more fittings coming. I'm going to do a 180 off of this. I'll run them all through that wiring harness hole along the inside of the frame rail there. And then, uh, you know, they're gonna, there's going to be one coming out here to the rack, one coming out of the rack, uh, probably around over the pump. I'm going to do the pump over here, reservoir probably here. And uh, return line probably will just come right across the K member on the bottom across over to the reservoir. I'm not sure. I got it all mapped up, and I think I have all the fittings that I need coming. Uh, what I've discovered with these is there's a great degree of variation uh, between the Hydro Boost setups on these cars. There's like the 96... I... I don't even know. I've found all kinds of crap, and everything basically says different. Uh, supposedly, the Cobras are the only ones with the lines that you can split here. Uh, this is not a Cobra, but I could take the lines off here. So, I didn't have to pull the Hydro Boost at all. Again, things not to do. So, getting it back in there was a lot of fun. These four bolts are... I, I hate. I hate myself. I rammed my forehead with a brake pedal about nine times, clicking the brake uh, switch back up. But she's in there. I think it's going to work. Um, a lot of the write-ups I've seen do, they get rid of these the, the short lines, and they run fittings into the, the Hydro Boost, the casting itself. But I can't do that because this fitting for the low-pressure uh, return, I won't focus, but... That guy down there is not a barb fitting like all of the drawings for the write-ups on this, I found, said. It's a threaded, like, tiny little banjo bolt. I mean, it's a little bitty guy. And I couldn't really find a fitting that would fit that, uh, but luckily my lines separate there. So um, I just, you know, had to order $250 more of lines. So that sucks, but hopefully I'll have some power steering on this thing. Um, I guess I should have painted that. The hybrid just looks kind of bad now that it's in there. Oh well, not coming out again unless uh, I really have to, and then I'm going to cuss a lot and break things. Um, so that's really all I've done on the car today. Uh, uh, I got a couple cooling uh, madugers, uh, you know, to finish up some of the cooling system. I'm curious if anybody's watching this that's done a swap. Um, what do you do about this heater hose line, this one, because that MF is, like, higher than I'll get out. And so, like, oh, it's going to be close. Uh, I don't know. So, by the time I get, like, a hose on there, I mean, I, I guess I'll cut the inner part of the hood out if I have to. I might cut this off shorter. Maybe just take it off and do that. I don't know. Might do that. I'm a little concerned with the... I'm going to run the... I ordered it. It's not here yet. The Blowfish Racing Power Steering Pump Bracket. Uh, I've seen some of the, like, the Ford Performance ones that go in the same spot that are, like, adjustable that don't use the stretchy belt. Uh, hit the sway bar. So the sway bar comes right through that territory somewhere. So I hope I don't have sway bar clearance issues. But if I do, I'll just space it, I guess. Or figure something else out. Um, so I'm up under the firewall, I got the seat out, I got the steering wheel off of it, and getting ready to put this scram speed bracket in. And, uh, an interesting thing here, let's see, so, this is the old pedal, it's funny how floppy these things are when you get them out, but, uh, so you can see the stock mounting holes, um, these correspond with these guys here, and... You line these bolts up to be accurate. Okay, yes, yes, yes. And you can see if you were to like line these bolt holes up and do a comparo contrasto with the gas pedal, it's in a pretty significantly different spot. Uh, 
I'm not sure how I feel about that right now. But, I mean, it'll work. Like, it's further, I think it's further left of where this pedal was. Uh, and this pedal, like, buries itself in the carpet. My car hasn't had carpet in a decade. And uh, there's still carpet stuff in there. But, uh, so I'm going to put that in and see what I think about it. Uh, and it doesn't use the three holes. This one, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to cut this off. Because that's going to be up against the tunnel. I probably will. No big deal, I guess. But... Um, it just uses two these two bolt holes, which I guess is fine. I don't know. It didn't come with instructions. It came with a business card and a dope sticker in Grand Theft Auto font. So I'm going to put that on the sticker fridge. And, oh, yeah, sticker fridge. Some of y'all guys ain't seen this mug. Look at this. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. I've only purchased about maybe three of these products. But, by God, we got some stickers. Anybody need a some some garbage you just let me know all right let's put this pedal in all right so throttle pedal bracket is installed i've only hit my face six times getting under here and pedaling with this and you get your throttle pedal guy in there and you can tell oh you can't see it on this side this is this is way too uh much so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to skedaddle that out of there on that side. This tab is is way too big. It's so dark you can't see anything. I'm too fat for this. After a little sawzall and grinder smooth in there, that's what we come up with. It's not real pretty, but I think it'll work. Right then, El Throdel Padello is in, boys and girls. Let me get this refocused a little bit here so y'all can see. It's just not wanting to, it's just not wanting to. Maybe if I get this way on the light, hold on, hold on. Oh, look at there. So we got our bracket in, throttle pedal in, scram speed comes with the bolts and some uh, lock washers, which is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, I raised the throttle, throttle pedal up a lot. But, oh, did y'all like that? I wrote that just now for y'all uh so throttle pedal is up a lot it's a little more left well i don't know it's about the same left to right as the original it actually may be a little more right than the original um and if i can show it so this hits the sound deadening garbage insulation bs that's in here that i want to take out but i'm too lazy to but with the throttle pedal being a lot higher um I like it. I think it's going to make heel towing a lot easier, uh, which will be cool for race car activities. But uh, I think the right way to do this is going to be probably to pull all the sound deadening crap out and mount the scram speed bracket back in there to the firewall itself. And then you have a little more real estate down here to mash the go-go maker. I'm not sure if that's wide open throttle or not. I'll get the computer hooked up. We'll see if like, I'm only getting like 98 or 90% throttle and I'll, I'll cut that garbage out of there. But for now it'll work, I reckon. Uh, there's some plugs under the dash. I don't know what they do that aren't plugged up. I'm just gonna just tuck those up in there and pretend I didn't see it. And uh, I need to re-grip tape the clutch pedal too, but that's a task for another day. So getting to some of the wiring here uh i've decided i'm gonna run as much of the wiring not in the engine bay as i can uh and so in that regard what i've decided to do here where's my bra oh where's my dead gum bracket at shoot i should really prepare better for these videos i know that i've got a bracket around here some cars don't you love that you just had it there it is it's right there where i thought it was I'm just blind. All right. So let me get under here. I'm going to run the fuse box for the car right where the washer tank used to be. And I've been fiddling with some things. And I've decided I want to run it uh, like at an angle like this. Way up in there. <laughs> right way up in there. I can't reach it because I'm on the ground. Well, that snaps into this bracketry guy here. And uh, so how I'm going to do this, 
there's a hole in this side of the bracket right there and this stock hole that it mounts to and so I'm gonna put that up there at an angle like that using those two bolts to hold it in so I thought this was a good time to show off one of my favorite devices a rib nut uh, because I need to butt that up against that flat piece of metal that I don't have access to the back of and it's a perfect uh, place for a rib nut and I'll just run a nut and a bolt through this I think on the side because it'll be hard to get a rib nut in that side that close up there so let me show you what I'm talking about alright rib nuts so I got this kit off Amazon when I was rally crossing uh, and it's great man for like putting skid plates up under a uh, beater pieces of crap and you know stuff like that and basically what you do is you have this threaded sleeve right let me see if I can undo this with one hand because I'm holding my telephono with the other oh crap there we go okay so you got this threaded sleeve and you can see there's splines in it and if you notice the threads are uh, about halfway down right so what this does you drill a hole in whatever you're wanting to put this in drill a hole slide this uh thread this onto your tool here and then this tool gives her the old uh, you thread it on like this and then when you when you're ready to put it in you smash her down and that compresses these splines and they ain't going nowhere son so you have a nice little uh basically like a nut in whatever flat piece of steel you want you want and you don't have to get to the back of it and it looks really dope and it'll uh it'll withstand a beating uh any kind of beating you can throw at it so I'm going to get started on this, and then I'll kind of show you a couple little clips along the way to get the gist. Alrighty, let's see. So, uh, on rib nuts, there's a chart somewhere that I think is in this instruction packet that is like, it's just frozen together somehow. I can't get the, I don't, I can't, there's one page that's open, the rest of them just tear. It got wet, I left it in the truck. Anyway, uh, you're supposed to... Use a specific drill bit for a specific, you know, doodad. This one's close. Uh, you know, you don't want to go too big. If anything, go too small. Because uh, this won't, these teeth won't grip. But I went too big because the too small one was a realsies too small. So let me thread this guy on here. And see if we can jab a rib nut in right fast. And get my bracketry ironed out. So that's down finger tight when this is open. A little better maybe yeah there we go uh, <clears throat> uh yeah all right so drill our hole get down here and fall around a bunch uh. oh no oh, yep. there we go okay so you see i drilled me a big old hole there and now i'd like to video this somehow i'm not like one of them fancy folks that has all the the video doodads so there's that right and so now all you do is just uh, squeeze them together let me put the phone down and see if this works hold on man i wish i could maybe i can now get the rear in for a minute maybe and uh, see if you guys no i can't even do that i don't know what to tell you hold on a second ah. all right so I think we're good. Now she sees she'll just hang in there because the, the rib nut's in. So you gotta you gotta loosey goosey her off here and that'll pull the threads out of the rib nut. And then it'll just fall in your lap in a minute like an idiot. Whoa! There we go. And so now you got you a nice threaded little uh medoocher there that you can just uh stick a bolt in. So now I'm gonna mark my spot for my other on this bracket here on the side this side Let's see if we can get that mounted all right then well so i got my nut on this side Ugh, my bracket in 
I put a big old mm -hmm. nut as a spacer there to get that off the uh, fender skirt, whatever the heck you call that, I don't know. And then I got my rib nut in the top up there on the bottom. You probably can't even see it. There it is. But uh, so bracket. Well, hello. Let me see if I can snap this harness up in there for you guys right quick. Okay, get back up a little bit. Hold on. This is, uh, you know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but neither am I. So it'll either work or it won't. We'll find out one of these days. Maybe the car will probably never run realistically. I don't know why I'm worried about all this. Uh, oh, oh. This side went in. That side won't because it's hitting the... F oh, frick. Well, here we go again. It won't snap in because it's not at a steep enough angle. I knew I was going to do this. I knew, I knew this was going to happen. Well, okay, so what do I do now? Do I take this whole thing loose and move the... Make my angle steeper? Ideally, yes, because that's kind of what I was envisioning originally, I think. Was it to be a little bit more, you know, like this, kind of? A lot of people, when they do these, they mount this box the other way, which would have been a lot easier, where the battery connection's on the top. But I didn't really like that because, you know, I'm probably going to crash it, and uh, I don't want my, my battery cable touching my fender. I'm probably just going to leave this, I think. You know, these are little clips are impossible to get out. I'm going to wire tie and zip tie some stuff. As you can see, the horns on the washer reservoir are gone. The, uh, I think, I think that'll work. I don't know. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm really just, you know, that's where I am with this. Uh, I ran my hood cable in here. Should have done that anyway. Here's my, oh, hello, washer squirter hose that I need to get rid of, but I probably won't. I'll probably just, I'll just get rid of those and that will probably, that'll probably ride. There's going to be an inner fender in here, I, I think, anyway. I plan on an inner fender. So, uh, oh yeah, this brake line, if you recall, and if you've watched all my videos, which I highly doubt, uh, but you never know, someday maybe somebody will find this and be like, oh, let me see. This brake line is like hella in the way of the K-member and like won't even get close to bolting back up. Uh, oh, and I dropped my stupid zip tie. Frick. Oh, uh, get on there. Get, get on. Do it. There we go. Okay. So, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I guess... I don't think I can bend... I don't think it's long enough. Like, literally, it's... It's not, you know... It's about an inch too short. I don't think I can get that out of bending it. I might, I might try to get in there and manhandle it a little later, but... I'm kind of hungry, and it's about dinner time, so I'm going to go eat some anchoritos or something, maybe, or a, maybe a tostada. I don't know. Ugh. Mexican sounds good. Mexican always sounds good to me, though. That's my problem. So anyway, cool. A little progress on the car today. All my power steering uh, circus should be in tomorrow, so if I have some free time, I'll get out here and start fiddling with that. Also, when you get your hydro boost in and you're checking your, uh, to make sure your pedal's connected and all that jazz, don't hit the brake pedal because it squirts power steering fluid all over your new paint. So I did that, but that's all right, I guess. Uh, it'll be okay anyway. All right, that's all I got, I think, for now, so.